Being a pop star looks fun, on the surface at least. Screaming crowds, large paychecks, etc. But tonight you're going to meet a pop star who has a fascinating take on what many consider to be the dream life. This is a guy who has earned fame, then lost it, then earned it back again. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis goes behind the scenes with Mike Posner. It's a summer night in New York City. And Mike Posner has got a sold out crowd of thousands on their feet. You might not know his name. Took a pill and he bees. But chances are you've been rocking out to his mega hit song, I Took a Pill and a Beats Up. It's hard to believe, but just a few hours earlier, this chart topping artist took the subway here flying totally under the radar. Mike Posner is enjoying sweet success right now, but the road here has been anything but smooth. We're here in Brooklyn, yeah. and we're gonna go check out this vinyl shop quick. Yeah. You've played awesome. here before. I have played here before. Did you take a pill in a pizza? Yeah, What I was did. the pill? Ecstasy, I think. You don't know what it was. I foolishly took a pill, and I would say I felt like heaven for about three hours, and I felt like hell for about 48 after that. I do not recommend that. It's a stupid thing to do. You got to hide your face you Mike got his first taste of music success at the age of 22 with a breakout record, Cooler Than Me. It's probably because you think you're cooler than you. A lot of people were saying, you were it. You were destined for stardom. I had a, a initial wave of um, popularity that in time crashed. Over the next four years, Posner recorded two more albums, both of which were never released by his record label, RCA. I got shelved. The record label at the time couldn't justify spending the marketing dollars promoting it. It was frustrating because I was making music that, that wasn't coming out, but in hindsight, it was the best thing that ever happened to me because I had to learn who I was without being cool without being popular. Ironically enough, two of the songs he wrote for himself during that time ended up becoming massive hits for other artists. Sugar for Maroon 5 and Boyfriend, which debuted as Justin Bieber's most successful single. Well, how does it feel to watch Justin Bieber sing your song? Well, it's our song now. He adds his thing to it, and he gave it to the world. What was it like working with Justin Bieber? I just thought this is a really good musician, a good singer, a good guitarist, a good pianist, a good drummer. You know, he's good at music. Did you learn anything from him? The biggest lesson I took away from just being with him, and we toured together, was the mystique of fame. That's when it really wore off for me. I saw what that actually meant, how limiting that can actually be. For people like that, I, you know, you can't walk out the door. There's a million people waiting outside. Pretty much packed up. So he made a radical decision. I bought this creepy Dodge conversion van with a bed in the back. And I thought, what fits in here will be mine. The rest would donate. What if we toured, but we took all the bull out? Take off your makeup. Embarking on what he called the ninja tour. It was his moment to reset, Take reflect, and rediscover himself as an artist. We're not selling anything. There's no tickets. There's no merch. There's no CDs. There's just guys playing songs. A stark contrast from the massive stage he's about to own. How would you feel today? You're about to play at the Barclays Center. Tomorrow, everything goes away. You get back in your van. I'd feel awesome, you know? You'd be okay with that? 100%. But tonight, he's closing out the show with the hit song that's brought him back into the spotlight. It's incredibly ironic. I'm just a singer. There's a line in the song that says, Who already blew his shot. I'm just a singer who already blew his shot. And the writing, of that line has seemingly given me another shot. For Nightline, I'm Rebecca Jarvis in Brooklyn, New York.